Good morning. It is good to see you this morning. It's good to have you, those of you that are with us at home. It is the third Sunday in Lent, and it is the first Sunday in March. Because it is the first Sunday, uh, it is our communion Sunday. Uh, For those at home, I hope that you might find elements that represent the bread and the cup that you can share with us. For those of you here in the sanctuary, just a quick piece of that. The servers will come to you uh, where you are in your pews, and they will allow you to uh, hand you a a bread cup and a juice cup. Um, You can then uh, take those elements where you are in your pews and leaving the cups then in the uh, pew fronts in front of you. There should be little holders where that is. In our uh, our service, uh, communion is open to those who uh, feel called to participate. And so it is, uh, you are each invited if you feel so comfortable to participate in our communion today. This is, uh, we continue our our food ministry on Mondays where we receive uh, casseroles and pantry items uh, in the north lobby entrance and the glass doors down in the big, uh, by the big set of stairs. Um, If you have items to drop off between 11 and noon, those will be uh, promptly taken afternoon down to our partners in the city who take care of many of the food needs of our community. That is on Mondays between 11 and noon. We continue on our third Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, for our Lenten book study uh, via Zoom at 7 p.m., Um, We continue in our study of Amy Jill Levine's book, Entering the Passion of Jesus. Uh, It has been a good study thus far, and we look forward to further study uh, of the six chapters over the next four more weeks. Those of you, as we are preparing for Holy Week and Easter, those of you that would uh, like to uh, purchase a lily in honor or in memory of someone, That will begin as soon as you want to make a phone call to the office or email the church office. Um, We'll be collecting that information from you about who you would like to remember or honor so that we can have that within the bulletin information. And we will also continue to uh, have those available. So the, the lilies are $15 this year and they will be in the sanctuary for Easter. Um, and, and those that get, um, picked up on Easter Sunday, um, can go home, and those that aren't will keep in the sanctuary for another couple weeks probably, but those are available to be purchased through the office, so just contact us there uh, for lilies. Um, so Holy Week does begin at the end of this month in three weeks. Three, uh, three, three weeks from today on the 28th of March is Palm Sunday. That week then uh, leads us to Monday, Thursday, where we'll have a 7 o'clock service uh, in the evening, Um, And then a Good Friday service that will happen online on the 2nd of April. And then Easter, um, we are finalizing our our plans for Easter Sunday uh, tomorrow. And so we will let you specifically know once those plans are finalized what that will look like. But Holy Week is such an important time in the life of the church to be able to worship and gather. Um, And so you are invited to keep that in mind as we prepare ourselves for the end of this month and beginning of April. So now, as we continue into this time of worship, you are invited invited to allow the Spirit to move within you, to open you to this time and where you would like like God to, to move within you to open yourselves to worship. So let us do so together. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. We come to worship the Lord who made heaven and earth. We ask, where did you get to know me? 
Jesus answered, I saw you under the tree. Come, let us worship God together in peace and prosperity. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. Lord, gather at this time and place, not because we are deserving of your love and not because we have lived faithfully before your face. We gather here because you have called us you have loved us before you could love you. You have given your son for our salvation. For this we join all creation in blessing you, praising you, thanking you. As we offer our praise, we long for you to mold us in the image of your son, whose death and resurrection give us hope. Most merciful God, whose son Jesus Christ was tempted in every way, yet was without sin. We confess before you our sinfulness. We have hungered after that which does not satisfy. We have compromised with evil. We have doubted your power to protect us. Forgive our lack of faith. Have mercy on our weakness. Restore in us such trust and love that may we walk in your ways and delight in your will. Let us pause for silent confessions. Amen. Jesus said, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hear the good news. In Christ, you have been forgiven. Live into your forgiveness and be at peace. Amen. to the third chapter of our book for our children's time, Grasshopper on the Road. Reading storybooks brings us back to our own, chi own childhood, connects us to our time as parents, grandparents, neighbors, as we think about childhood and the simple, wonderful stories that come with it. And so this third chapter is called The Sweeper. Grasshopper saw a cloud of dust. Clean, 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 said the housefly who was sweeping the road. My broom and I will make this road as clean as can be. Housefly, said Grasshopper, the road is not very dirty. It is much too dusty, said the housefly. It is covered with stones and sticks and other nasty things. My broom and I will brush them all away. The housefly went on sweeping. One day I was at home, not doing much of anything, said the housefly. I saw a speck of dust on my rug. I picked up the speck of dust. Next to it was another speck of dust. I picked up that one too. Next to that speck of dust was another speck of dust. 
I ran and got my broom. I swept up all the dust that was on my rug. Then I saw a piece of dirt on the floor. Next to it was another piece of dirt, and next to that was another piece of dirt. With my broom, I swept up all the dirt that was on my floor. I cleaned my whole house from top to bottom. I even washed my windows. After I washed them, I looked outside. I saw my garden path. There were ugly pebbles on my garden path. I rushed outside with my room and I swept all the pebbles away. At the end of the path was my gate. It was covered with mud and moss. I scrubbed all the mud and moss off my gate and I opened the gate and walked on, out onto this dusty, dirty road. I took my broom and I went sweep, sweep, sweep up the road, said the housefly. You've worked very hard, said Grasshopper. I think that you should rest for a while. No, 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 said the housefly. I will never rest. I, have, I am having a wonderful time. I will sweep until the whole world is clean, clean, clean. The dust was getting into Grasshopper's eyes, so he said goodbye to the housefly. And he went on down the road. There is much that needs to be cleaned. Our rooms, I dare to say, often need to be cleaned. Our toy spaces often need to be cleaned. Our clothes often need to go through the washing machine. There are other things in our world that need to be cleaned up as well. Maybe not from dirt or dust or moss but things that shouldn't be. Ways that we treat each other, ways that we behave around each other. It's important work, the way we treat our neighbor, the way that we invite our systems, our world to be better. But Jesus knew, like Grasshopper, that even in the work that we have been called to, we need to find times to rest for a moment. Jesus often would go away from the crowds. He would go to a secluded place and try to find rest. Sometimes he was successful and other times the crowds would follow him, but he would always make the effort. Sunday morning is an opportunity for all of us to maybe take a rest. It's not meant to be a time that just changes us into only rest but a time that we come and carve out a moment to rest, to worship, and then to go out again where the world, where the road still needs to be swept and cleaned. And so we are glad that we have the opportunity, whether we are here or at home, to rest for this moment, to lay our burdens down, and then to be called back into the important work that Christ calls all his disciples to be about. Thanks be to God for the work, and thanks be to God for the opportunities to rest before getting back to work. Let us pray. Loving God, your love calls us into the, to the work of discipleship, but it also re recognizes our need for rest, for renewal before beginning again. So inspire us in this time of rest. Awaken us, energize us, and then call us back into the world to love and care for one another. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we share peace with one another from where we are, unfortunately. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.
You may be seated. The musical came out in 2015, but I don't think I heard anything about it for, for a little while. Maybe it was the next year or maybe even 2017, but at some point, like most of us, we started to hear about this off-Broadway that soon went to Broadway musical called Hamilton. The soundtrack was the first way for me. I couldn't 
for any reason that I could come up with, but the soundtrack was available on my phone. I could listen to it, and I did two hours of the soundtrack for many different times and places, whether I was just in the car, on a long trip sometimes, or much of the words of the play kind of got in my head. There's one part in, in the song that is in the second act of the play, the second half, where George Washington is letting Alexander Hamilton know that he is going to not run for president an extra term. He's going to step down. He's going to retire from what he had been doing. The song is called One Last Time. And in the song, Washington explains to Hamilton why he's going to step down. Part of the reason he gives is a scriptural reference. In the song, he explains, everyone will sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. They'll be safe in the nation we made. I want to sit under my own vine and fig tree, a moment alone in the shade, at home this nation we made one last time. The lyrics got stuck in my head, but even though I'm a pastor and was a pastor at the time, it didn't really dawn on me that maybe I should look up what the scriptural reference was. Even after going and being privileged to have the opportunity to see the play in person twice in Chicago, never did I really think where is that in the Bible? Until recently, as thinking about this sermon today, and then I located it. It's Micah, 6, Micah 4, and it's the fourth verse, but together we will be reading the first through the fourth verse for our scripture lesson today. In days to come, the mountains of the Lord, Lord's house shall be established as the highest of mountains and shall be raised up above the hills. People, people shall stream to it, and a nation shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees and no one shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. Lord, your scripture awakens us to deeper meanings within our world, within our own life. So may we also once more through this scripture and through our time together, be open to your spirit and where we are called at this time to go and to be. In Christ's name we lift our prayer. Amen. I was surprised when I got to the text that connected to and play. I was surprised because now I found the familiar words of the lyric, familiar words in the Bible. How often have we heard about beating, plow, uh, beating swords into plowshares and spears in pruning hooks? But what's interesting is that I did a little digging and I didn't remember those texts coming out of Micah. In fact, Normally, most often, we hear those words coming from the prophet Isaiah. 
Listen, since you just heard from Micah 1 through 4, 4, 1 through 4, listen to Isaiah 2, 2 through 4. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that we, he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the words of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the, the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they fear, they learn war any more. Word for word, verses 2 through 4 of Isaiah 2 match Micah 1 through th uh, 4, 1 through 3. The words are the same. In fact, we think that this is a common poem about, about peace, about national global, worldwide peace that would have been part of the faith and religion of the time, a known poem that would have been used almost as a creed, maybe, in the worship of that time period. But as often is important when we see similar or even duplicated text within the Scriptures, we look for what is different to help us learn some nuances. And what is different between Isaiah and Micah is that Micah adds that line about our own vine and fig tree. That is unique to Micah's text in this poem, added at the end as a way of going deeper than maybe where Isaiah took us. There must be something for Micah about that line something that needs to be told to the people of that time and our own, our own ears today. Everyone will sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one will make them afraid. If you think about it, it many of us have studied about history and so often history is studied by the major events and for better or worse historians tend to use wars and violence moment violent moments as markers we learn about the revolutionary war and the civil war and world war one and world war two and and korea and vietnam and 9 11 and these become historic markers when we think about our national history and when we think about world history, we also mark it by the battles and the violence and the wars that happen in different places. So often, most of us through some history class have studied what happens, what causes much of these conflicts. And it seems to me that one of the common factors in most conflict is that somebody wants something or that somebody wants something returned to them that they think was theirs. How many, fight, how many fights have happened over oil or diamonds or even opium? How many conflicts historically have happened in the search for gold or for shorter routes to, drop, to pick up and drop off spices in faraway lands? Conflict often has been connected to resources for the sense of need or the lack of what is needed. I wonder how much resources play as we think about everyone sitting under their own vine and their own fig tree. I've had the opportunity to go and visit Africa twice on different mission trips over the years. One before I was a pastor and one after I was ordained. Like many countries in the world, there is a visual understanding of resources or what was once 
maybe lush resources that now are much more scarce in many of the nations on the continent of Africa. Outside powers often control minerals and oils and other resources, and poverty within the nations drives locals not only into conflict, but to reduce the resources that they scarcely have. This is no easier scene than looking at the trees of most villages within Africa. The villages that I visited, most of the trees have been cut down. The sea, most folks are cooking their daily meals, even sanitizing sometimes their water over the wood-fired open flames. And so the trees get cut down. And whole villages begin to dry out and become arid. The ground becomes dusty and hard with the feet that walk over it and with the lack of rain or shade as the sun beats it into clay. And so people then walk either for great distances or they find a new eco economy by bringing small bundles of wood closer to these villages to be purchased and bought so that the food can be cooked. And sometimes in desperation, in drought, in fear, when the resources are at their least, violence and conflict occurs. In my last trip, it was in the country of, Malaw of uh, uh, Malawi. The village that we were working in was almost completely devoid of trees, but there was the one tree, and it was not a little tree. It was a great, large, old tree, and it seemed like it was very purposely left there, that nobody would dare to harm that tree. It was the tree that we would come to every day and we would begin our morning under that tree and then at, at lunchtime we would gather back under that tree to have our water and our and our sandwiches and at the end of the day we would gather one more time back under the tree the rest of the time we were out under the sun working on the houses that we were helping build and feeling the heat of the sun draping uh, the the cold rags around our necks so that we wouldn't get overheated but that tree was beautiful it welcomed us as outsiders at the end of the week it was under that tree that we celebrated our time together we sang and we danced and we laughed and we watched the children play of that village it was a great gathering and a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the week and a half that we had been there together and the relationships that we had built that tree suddenly was the center of life for that village and for us as outsiders visiting the village it was the center of welcome of hospitality of gratitude and because of that it was a tree of peace it was a place where people could come and work out their challenges or difficulties. It was a place sacred for that village. Everybody will sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one will make them afraid. The challenge that we all encounter is enough. How much is enough for you and for me and how much is enough for then our neighbors our sisters our brothers around the world how much is enough everyone not just you not just I but everyone will sit under their own vine and fig tree everyone will have the shade and the food of the vine and the food of the fig tree but also everyone will no longer be either the owner or the worker or the slave but everyone will be the owner and worker together this image that micah wants us to see of this peace 
that we all wish for, hope for, this vision of heaven that we plan and want to see within our own community, our world around us, for ourselves and for our families and our generations still to come, that's when the swords can be made into plowshares, spears into pruning hooks. And so today we come to the table. We come to this meal that isn't an extravagant feast, but it is enough. And we're reminded within the cup, the, the, the bite of bread, and within the taste of the vine, we're reminded that it isn't that we need to be filled over capacity. It's that we need enough and that truly Christ is enough. Is enough if we will allow Christ to change our own way of being. Because if we have enough, we recognize that there is so much that we have then to offer. That we don't have to keep back, to hoard back, to hold back from one another. Whether it's the resources physical that we have, or the love that we've been given, we have more than enough. And Christ, Christ has given us and promises to continue to give us and refill us with enough so that maybe in small and big ways we can welcome others to their own vine and fig tree and together we can put away fear and we can share life. We can share the trees that we have and the beauty that God has already given. Thanks be to God for what we have and for the opportunity to share it with one another. Amen. It's that gratitude that comes when we recognize what we have already the great vastness of God's grace and love that bestows itself in so many different ways. It is that gratitude that then calls us to share with one another. Because we don't want to hold that grace and love. We want everyone to experience it, if at all possible. So now is our time that we remember that God calls us to share what we have in gratitude, in joy, and then calls us together as stewards of God's gifts to share that with each other, with our world, our community, our neighbors. If you have the opportunity to share of your time or talent or treasure, you can share here in the sanctuary as you depart or by sharing it with the church through our online giving or in the mail. But however God has called you, I pray in this moment, through the music of this moment, that it will open you to knowing what is enough and how to share what God has given you more of. Amen.
As we come to the table, we also are drawn to the flowers that are here as a part of our service, and we remember that they've been given in memory of Mary House's mother, Betty Kirkpatrick, who was a lifelong member of this congregation. We also remember that and give thanks that Bob Stratton has been able to return home after his uh, time of uh, rehab and recovery from his broken arm. And we remember Alan Wilson in his continued uh, efforts and work to recover from COVID-19. I'll also be doing a funeral service for uh, not a member of this church, but of my previous church. And so we will be keeping the family and friends of Eileen Williamson in our prayers today as well. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want me to go and make the preparations for you to, uh, for the, to eat the Passover? So he, went out of, uh, he, went, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, Go into the city and, many, and find a man who will be carrying a jar of water who will meet you and follow him. And whatever, wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. And so Christ calls us to make our preparations here at this table to prepare the meal so that we might then be be brought together in the bread and in the cup. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we come to you in prayer with thanksgiving. We thank you for your love that created this world, that gave us all that we need to live and be happy. And yet recognizing how we take your gifts for granted, how we turn to our own ways, we have not appreciated all that we have. We've taken blessings for granted, and worse, we've taken you for granted. And yet your love was so great that even when we sinned against you, you did not turn away, but rather you sent your Son to show us your love, to show us your will, and then finally to pay for our sins. Jesus, this Sunday in Lent, we celebrate your gifts to us. We celebrate that you would sacrifice yourself when we couldn't raise ourselves up. We thank you that we have an empty cross because death couldn't hold you. And having paid for our sins, you rose again and ascended to heaven to sit beside the Father. We give thanks and we ask that you would bless us. You would bless us to serve you, to enjoy you, and eventually to come before you and spend eternity with you. We ask for your blessings on our families, especially those of Eileen Williamson and Alan Wilson. We pray for those who are hurting physically, whether from COVID or anything else, but especially we pray for those who are suffering spiritually, for having been blessed and coming forth together like this to celebrate those blessings We recognize those in our families and our friends and elsewhere who just don't know what's available, who haven't come to you to receive these gifts that we have. We pray for our congregation. We give you thanks that we can once again assemble for worship and fellowship and discipleship. And we ask that we might be able, as time goes on, to share again more intimately that friendship, 
that comes from having a shared Lord. We pray for the church. Let Christians around the world show the love that we have received. Show compassion for those who are hurting. Show understanding for those of different opinions. But above all, show the love that will identify us truly as your children. We pray for our country, those who are hurting for jobs, those who are hungry or fearful, those who feel afraid for any reason. We pray for those who provide help, whether it's a grocery store clerk, a police officer, a doctor. We ask that those who would keep us safe receive a special care, that they themselves might be kept safe. And we pray for our world that besides this infection of disease, we might resist the infections of hate and selfishness and that we might learn to live together and indeed strive towards that time when each might have his or her own vine and fig tree. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence among us and within each of us. Grant us that peace that comes from knowing we are in a right relationship with God, that peace that comes from knowing his will and rejoicing that we get a chance to do it. Indeed, Holy Spirit, let us be answers to these very prayers. Let us be your instrument of blessing to others. This we pray in the name of Jesus our Lord, praying now the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The night in which he was arrested and betrayed, our Lord first went to that upper room that the disciples had prepared. He then took the bread after giving thanks for the meal. He took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In a similar fashion, he took the cup after supper saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins take and drink all of you do this in remembrance of me for every time that we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup we are proclaiming Christ's saving death until he comes in glory friends the table has been prepared all are invited may the servers come forward
Please join me in our prayer after communion. Lord God, in deep gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people, we give ourselves to you. Send us out to live as changed people because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect much from us, enable much by us, encourage many through us. So, Lord, may we live to your glory, both as inhabitants of earth and citizens of heaven. Amen. charge you to, to see what has already been given. At the table today and through the life that you have already lived, the blessings, the grace, the trees, the vines, the fig trees, enough. And then in gratitude and thanksgiving, find ways to share that love and blessing with those that you love and know and with a world that is in such need. So may we go with the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and Holy Spirit. May those blessings continue to rest upon you and those you love, and also on those that nobody loves. Now and forevermore, world without end. Amen. Amen.